Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. I'm going to um, do a couple of debunks of certain aspects of this Penn and Teller episode. Um, let me make it perfectly clear. I agree with them insofar as what it does to screw up humans. The Endangered Species Act is a complete waste of time. Um, that being said, however, um, I think that there's been a couple of things which have been uh, overlooked by the um, biologists they brought back on board. Um, for part of the problem, we are suffering a possibility of increase of dangerous, endangered species extinction. Now, note, of course, that, this pro that part of this will not necessarily happen in, uh, until if and when the global warming incident becomes too dangerous. If we stop it now, that won't be an issue. Um, for further info on that, see my video, Penn and Teller's Biggest Blunder, in relation to the environmental episode, and um, click the link in the summary for logical science. On that list is a peer-reviewed paper, uh, is, a, is a link to a peer-reviewed paper uh, article, um, to a, uh, an article in a peer-reviewed, pa um, sorry, a paper in a peer-reviewed journal, um, which talks about um, which talks about the um, possible extinction of various uh, species of shellfish and the like, owing to the oceans becoming more uh, acidic um, as they become a CO2 sink. Um, now, again, this uh, can be reduced if we deal with the CO2 emissions. So that's and we're already starting to deal with that owing to the whole other effects of climate change. So that's a lesser issue right now. The bigger issue which I have a concern with is um, whales in particular. This was the only thing which I had any problem with was that was the it was in relation to how uh, Penn handled the Sea Shepherd's complaint about uh, end, uh, endangered whales. Yes, I think that the um, that uh, Paul Watson's uh, emotional argument was incorrect. But that being said, I don't think that that does not, that, that necessarily means that the whales aren't endangered. For example, here according to the World Wildlife Fund, uh, World Wildlife Fund. Um, of course, the World Wildlife Fund is generally quoting directly from the uh, top-level biologists and the like. Um, a large chunk of their um, issue, which they dealt with on polar bears, was quoted from, um, you know, from biologists up north, look, uh, looking at the effects of polar ice cap melt on polar bear populations. So again, this is reasonable. Um, you know, we can be reasonably sure that these stats are good insofar as these whales are dealt with. Um, apparently, out of the 17 great whales that are still left, uh, species that are still left. Um, there, uh, there's the, um, apparently there uh, are 13 species of. Um, uh, sorry, let me make sure that I've read this right because I don't want to. Okay, apparently according to uh, still 13, um, seven out of the 13 great whale species are still endangered or vulnerable after decades of protection. Um, apparently, uh, the uh, okay, I'm just trying to find which ones are the uh, in particular are the endangered whales. Um, Okay, apparently according to this, if I'm reading this right, from the World Wildlife Fund, um, there are apparently, uh, oh, sorry, I lost my place here. Am I sure I've read this right? Yeah, okay, apparently according to this, um, this is of total, this is of, uh, um, oh, oh wait, no, sorry, that's just a description of um, various different species which are still, uh, Okay. Well, anyway, according to this, um, well, according to that stat right there, um, as I said, 13 of the 17 species of great whale are still uh, left alive. Sorry, I was trying to find the specific ones uh, are still um, are still endangered or uh, or you know or need protection. Um, okay. Let's see. Apparently, according to this, um, uh, where are we here? Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Okay. Apparently, according to this, there are 13 species uh, species of baleen whales: um, blue, uh, blue fin, say brides, humpback, north mink, uh, sorry, northern mink, southern minke. Uh, that's spelled M-I-N-K-E. North Atlantic right, North Pacific right, Southern right, Pygmy right, uh, bowhead, and gray. Uh, apparently, well, gray is no longer an endangered species, but, uh, let, okay, I'm just trying to, um, the only great whale with teeth of the sperm whale, oh, oh, wait, sorry, this is biological info. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
three, four, Okay, apparently of the, um, no? Screw wheel still in speed, still in, okay. Hang on, give me a sec. I'm going to check up another stat from somewhere else, just trying to locate the um, independent one. Where did I go? Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, SeaWorld. Uh, SeaWorld's fact sheet of which ones are still endangered. Okay, uh, apparently according to this, and this is um, largely a chunk of these listings are actually from the uh, ICUN, um, which is the, um, sorry, IUCN, which is the World Conservation Movement. It's the International Whaling uh, Commission, roughly. Okay, so apparently, according to this, uh, there are um, the, the the species of in, uh, of whale which are still endangered are as follows, um, and this is according to the international: um, the northern right whale, the southern right whale, the blue uh, the bowhead whale, the blue whale, the fin whale, uh, the say whale, which is spelled S-E-I, uh, the humpback whale, the sperm whale, the vaquita, beji, Indus susu, the ganji susu, boto. Fran uh, Franciscana, uh, the Tukuxi, um, Hector Hector's dolphin, Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin, and the Atlantic humpback dolphin. Um, it's all known, um, and f apparently, um, yeah, apparently these uh, are both unknown but depleted and unknown but thought to be depleted. Okay, so anyway, um, that was according to SeaWorld's uh, website. Okay, so anyway, uh, long story short, there does seem to be a problem of endangered species. However, I disagree about, uh, the implement about the act and its implementation. One of the things which surprises me, and this is, um, a, a, again, a bit which I agree with Penn and Teller, is it sort of surprises me that, the, uh, indeed, that an Endangered Species Act would be passed, um, but you know, if, if there was an endangered species in a local area, but not necessarily in another part of its natural habitat, that the government doesn't come in and actually relocate uh, those owls in their habitats or what have you. You know, takes them, captures them, and then re releases them in the wild area where they're normally you, where the most of their population is, um, or expands the popu and expands that area just by a little bit to accommodate for um, new um, animals and the like going in there. Um, the other thing I want. Um, well, let's just say I'll continue more of this in another video uh, at a later point in relation to uh, ecosystems. The one thing which I had a slight disagreement with the biologist about, um, uh, sorry, with the co-founder of Greenpeace, is that he points out that um, these people, that the um, animals can breed just fine in the second growth forest. And I agree, the um, old growth should be able to uh, do responsible, we should be able to return to responsible logging. That being said, however, the issue is not necessarily whether or not there is uh, breeding room, but whether there is enough room for food for all the, um, whether there is enough room and enough food for all the species in, uh, you know, for the, you know, for the species to be able to multiply back to stabilized levels. Um, in Canada, we have something a little bit better than the U.S. when it comes to uh, stuff pertaining to government regulation of endangered species. We don't have an Endangered Species Act. We have natural parks. Um, and of course, now some of now of course some of these uh, some corporations keep trying to pressure the government to give up natural park national parks or provincial parks for logging and the like and uh, or for development and um, you know areas which would normally which are normally earmarked for conservation. Uh, they've been trying to get these areas just because of the fact that they want access to the old growth wood in them. Um, unfortunately, uh, I am slightly biased. That there is one thing about the Endangered Species Act which is a benefit for Canada. Because of the fact that you guys don't buy lumber, we end up shipping softwood lumber down by the ton to you guys uh, down in the states. Um, but anyway, long story short, um, you know we we have we do still have to fight that, and there is a large chunk of you know scientific data which does suggest that uh, some of these species are you know quite endangered and the like. But what we do is that we actually provide um, we actually provide uh, small pockets, if you will of provincial or national parks which are um, generally not given up and there's a reason for this even if the species becomes endangered there's enough of an ecosystem uh, left to sustain it uh, you know to sustain it albeit at a small level and it provides a nice little uh, nature place for tourists to come and take a look at the local ecosystem so we've managed to uh, turn conservation into a tourist industry and uh, thus make it a benefit uh, thus make it an economic turn off uh, um, you know turn out in the process um, you know, as uh, per, I agree with the show. Uh, the Endangered Species Act is bullshit. Um, it could, you know, there, the government needs to do something to make sure these species are survived. But I think that a relocation policy, um, you know, moving endangered species to better habitats or, um, you know, making making more national parks, you know, small localized niches where um, endangered species can survive and, you know, sustain, but not necessarily at large enough levels, which means that there's enough land available for development. And, of course, they provide useful little tourist spots. Hey, it beats Mount Rushmore. That's my thoughts. Toodles.